Hey guys, my name is Jeannie and we have officially lived here in Colorado for one full year and I wanted to give you some honest feedback about what it's like to live here now that we have officially lived here for one full year. I'm going to break this video down into seven different sections. I'm going to talk about weather, transportation, people, the geology, plants and animals, things to do, and housing. Now to give you some context of where we came from, we moved from the Midwest. We lived in a tiny little town in Minnesota. It was a very rural population under 2,000 people. And now we live in northern Colorado by Loveland, Fort Collins. So this is my perspective coming from the Midwest, Minnesota to Colorado. So of course, one of the most important topics is weather. Colorado gets more sunny days than Florida. The sun here is warm year round. Now in the summers, it is hot and dry. We get up into the 80s and 90s. We even hit 100 a few days, but it's a dry heat. It is not that muggy, moist, sticky heat that you would feel in the Midwest. It's nice and dry. So even though we get up into those high digits, um, it's still a comfortable heat. Coming from the Midwest to a dry heat climate is so different and I love, 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 love the dry heat. Now, the nice thing about Colorado is we live on the front range of Colorado, which is the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. And when it is hot on the weekends, you just go into the mountains and you have beautiful, crisp, mountain air that cools you right down, like perfect weather. Now, Colorado is considered a high desert climate. So because it is, you know, very warm and it is very dry here, you got the dry skin, you got the dry eyes. Actually, that was one thing I had issues with when we first moved here was my eyes. It took a while for my eyes to adjust. They were very dry. Now I'm totally fine. I have no issues. I don't need to use eye drops anymore. Um, everything has adjusted. Because it is so dry out here, because we're high desert, um, we do have a lot of fire bans in place. Wildfires, of course, are something that are always of concern, and so is drought. So those are things to think about out here because it is a drier climate. But this might be a shocker to you because it was to me. Colorado has monsoon season. Weird, right? So <laughs> Let me explain. So from about June to September is considered monsoon season. So basically what we have found, what that really means is in the mornings you wake up, the skies are clear, blue, sunny skies. And by afternoon, big puffy clouds roll in and kind of are scattered. Um, and you might see a pop-up shower. You might have like random lightning that might just show up out of nowhere without rain, or you just might have those puffy clouds. So it's so crazy how in the mornings, there's not a cloud in the sky. And then right as the afternoon approaches, those big puffy white clouds roll in. And yeah, you never know what's gonna happen then. <laughs> but it's something to really keep in mind because if you are a big outdoor person who likes to go out hiking or something, you want to take on your hikes early in the morning so you can get back to the trailhead, back to your vehicle by the afternoon, just in case some showers do roll in in the afternoon. You're not caught out on a mountaintop in rain and lightning. And just like those random afternoon pop-up showers and possible lightning, we get random wind that comes through. So we can just be hanging outside on our deck, enjoying the day, and all of a sudden, the strongest winds come in out of nowhere and it is blowing tumbleweeds and dirt is like stirring up and flying everywhere. It is the craziest winds. It goes for 10 minutes and then it just stops. It's very random. I, I don't know what that's all about, but that's occasionally something that happens too. <laughs> now by about October, November, the climate does start to cool down. You'll get those fall feelings. Um, just a preference in September, we still had 90s. So yeah, October, November starts to cool down. You'll have those beautiful autumn days. You'll have the pumpkin patches, the aspen trees start lighting up. The falls here are absolutely gorgeous. Like out of this world, gorgeous with the mountains as the backdrop with all the aspen and colors and everything. It's so pretty. If you're someone who loves fall like I do, you're gonna love fall time in Colorado. Now let's talk about winter. So it never gets down to single digits here. Our entire winter so far has averaged between 30 to 40 degrees. And there's been times where it's been 50 degrees in like January. However, 30 and 40 might sound cold because when we came from the Midwest, like 30, 40 is pretty chilly. However, going back to the sunshine here, the sun is so strong and warm here 
that people are out wearing shorts and a sweatshirt. It's warm because of the sun, even though it's only 30 or 40 degrees. We were actually out snowshoeing once and we were getting hot. It was like, I don't know, a 30 degree day. My husband had to take his jacket off and cool down because the sun was so warm. So it's a, definitely a different experience than we ever expected because we're used to 30s and 40s being cold to the bone and like i said we don't get down into those single digits or negatives we've never seen negative digits here now if you live in the mountains you're gonna see a lot more snow than you do on the front range the eastern plains and the nice thing is if we do get snow here by the afternoon it's half melted already because the sun is so strong and it melts really quickly so if you are a lover of the sun you will love colorado i thrive from the sun that is so important to me i love having all these sunny days out here Next up, transportation. Now we have not really experienced much for road rage unless you're on the main interstates. There's two main interstates. So you got I-70, which runs west and east through Colorado. And then you have I-25 that runs north and south. Those two interstates uh, can get very crazy. <laughs> and we basically do whatever we can not to have to go on those more than we need to. However, I-70 is the main road that runs through the mountains. It's gonna be your main road that goes into Vail, Breckenridge, that's I-70. That's just what road you have to drive to get into those areas from Denver. And one thing to keep in mind, because that is your main road, you kind of have to plan your visits accordingly because Friday at five o'clock, it is nonstop traffic jams from Denver all the way in to the mountains. And then on the Sunday afternoons, everyone's coming back and it is nonstop traffic jams all the way back into Denver. So if you can avoid traveling into the mountains on a Friday afternoon or home on a Sunday afternoon, your life will be so much better. It's as if the entire front range goes to the mountains on the weekends. And then you add tourists into all of this, it gets pretty interesting. <laughs> so that's our experience during the summer. And we've had many people tell us that if you think summer can be bad, wait till winter. And I'm like, what? Why would it be worse in winter? Well, that's where all the ski resorts are. Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, you're gonna be in traffic jams all the way in to Breckenridge, Vail, all the ski resorts. And then on the afternoon, it's traffic jams all the way back to Denver. So heads up, it is very busy in the winter because of the ski resorts here in Colorado. And as for I-25, that runs from like Wyoming down to New Mexico, you can take a lot of back roads to avoid that interstate if you have to. It's pretty easy to avoid I-25 unless you are of course going into Denver. One thing is road construction. You guys, they've been working on the same patch of road since we moved here. It takes forever to get any type of road construction done here in Colorado. Now let's talk about the airport. DIA, the Denver International Airport, is the largest airport in the USA. I had no idea Denver. I thought it had been like Seattle or Atlanta or New York. I had no idea Denver was the largest airport in the US. And it's the second largest airport in the world. What? I had no idea. It doesn't look that big, but I guess it is. We did recently fly out of the airport to Hawaii and it didn't seem big. However, it was very busy. It was really hard to find seats um, near our gate and the seats we did find, it was like packed with people. Like there was hardly any open seats. Let's talk about car insurance since that's under transportation. We did see a pretty significant increase in car insurance out here. Out of all 50 states, I think Colorado is like number 13 of the most expensive. And I think Minnesota was like number 31. So there was a jump in there, um, but we're of course, we're not the most expensive. I think Florida and Michigan are like the most expensive for car insurance. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Car insurance was quite a bit higher out here. And lastly, our gas prices. This is insane to us because where we came from, if you were to go to a certain town, basically all the gas stations in the town were pretty much the same price, maybe a penny or two difference. Well, out here, you can have two gas stations right next to each other and they are both 50 cent different. Like the prices are not consistent anywhere with gas stations, anywhere, all over Colorado. They are just the craziest. We found an app called the Gas Buddy and we downloaded it and it shows all the different prices of gas throughout the entire state. And we've narrowed down where the least expensive gas is. Once we found the places that are the cheapest for gas out here, it's actually about the same as Minnesota. So 
In general, the gas prices out here aren't any higher than we saw in Minnesota. This winter, we were paying about $3.09 a gallon. And when we talked to our family, they said, yeah, gas was about $3.09, $3.14 in the same ballpark. So gas prices aren't higher. However, you have to shop around because <laughs> we can get our gas for $3.09. And literally right down the block will be another gas station and it'll be like $3.64. It's insane. Let's talk about people. People out here are genuinely friendly. Like every single person we run into or make contact with are the friendliest and nicest people we have ever met. You go to the grocery store or a restaurant and like the cashier or the waiter will ask you how you're doing, how's your day? Everyone is so friendly and happy out here and everyone has like a smile on their face. You can be going on a walk down the street and people say hi and wave. Everyone's super helpful. People hold the door open for you. It blew us away how friendly people were out here. We actually had some friends and family visit us from Minnesota and that was the first thing they noticed when we were going out to restaurants or we were like showing them like where we live, going to like grocery stores and stuff. They were like, people are really friendly and happy out here. I'm like, I know everyone is just lively and happy feeling out here. And I, I it makes my heart happy. <laughs> and of course, when you're surrounded by that all the time, it makes you happy, right? Like I just, I feel like there should be more of that in the world. Now, there are a lot of people moving to Colorado. You hear a lot of people moving from Texas and California to here. So wherever you're moving from, keep the friendly, nice Colorado spirit alive, okay? But fun fact, Colorado is one of the least diverse states in the USA. I think about 87% of the population is white. So there's that. And it's very similar when we go into like the little ski towns, like your Breckenridge, your Boulder, Vail, all that. Well, I like Boulder has a different kind of atmosphere. I don't know, that one, that one Boulder was different, but besides Boulder, <laughs> every, every other area has been some of the friendliest and nicest people we have ever met. Next up is the geology of Colorado. Now, Colorado is extremely diverse and it can be divided into three different parts. The west, you have the western slope. The middle is the Rocky Mountains and on the east is the Great Plains. We have canyons, we have mesas, we have buttes, we have Native American dwellings. We have 58 mountain peaks that are over 14,000 feet. We hold the most 14ers in all of the USA. We have alpine tundra, we have glaciers, we have sand dunes. You get the point. Blows my mind how much is in just our little state. Now coming from Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, um, well, that's not really the case out here in Colorado. We have a lot more man-made lakes that are called reservoirs. And then you will find those beautiful dreamy alpine lakes up in the mountains. They're glorious. There are just over 4,000 lakes and reservoirs throughout Colorado. And since we have the Rocky Mountains that stretch all the way through Colorado, the nice thing is if you're ever lost, just look for the mountains. <laughs> Those are always going to be west if you're on the east and you always know where you are because the mountains are always right there to guide you. They're basically a compass. Now let's talk about plants and animals. Now here on the front range, the eastern side of the state, we have prairie dogs, we have eagles, we have hawks, we have pelicans, we have pronghorns, we have mule deer, we have a lot of snakes I guess, um, and we have rattlesnakes. This last summer we only saw two snakes. One was a bull snake from far, far, far away, and then I saw another little grayish, greenish snake on the side of a walking trail. Didn't see a rattler, but they are around. We just have not seen one yet. And they were always out when we were out on walking trails is where we saw them. And the skies are black here with Canadian geese. I've never seen so much Canadian geese in my life. They are everywhere, all day long, in the winter, in the summer, everywhere, Canadian geese flying all over. <laughs> and once you start moving to the hills along the mountains, that's where you're gonna find your mountain lions. And when you are out on hikes in those hills, there are a lot of signs for being aware of mountain lions. We have not seen one yet, um, but it is something to keep in mind. And then of course, when you head into the Rocky Mountains, you will find elk, 
moose, bighorn sheep, mountain goats, marmots, and pikas, bears. We have a lot of beautiful, beautiful animals in the mountains. Now, as far as plants, we do have some prickly pear cactuses that do grow on the east and western side of the Rocky Mountains. There are a ton of wildflowers, especially in the mountains. It's so pretty, all the wildflowers here. The same flower is the Rocky Mountain Columbine. So you'll see a lot of that wrapped up into like businesses and hospitals. I see the word Columbine used a lot and that's in reference to the flower. Now, one of the craziest things to me um, that just blows my mind. Um, you know, on the side of the road, in ditches, and in fields, if it's like full of weeds, you know, normally weeds aren't very attractive. Well, the weeds in Colorado are sunflowers. Not even kidding. All the weeds along like roads, it's like sunflowers everywhere. They're just small little beautiful sunflowers all summer long. Um, we do have like some farmlands that are pretty close to us and one of them all summer long was filled with wild sunflowers. How can you beat that for a weed? And lastly, and the best part from what we have experienced, there are no bugs. Mosquitoes, ladybugs, all the bugs, there's none of them. We have never seen a mosquito in or near our house. When we were camping in the mountains this summer, because the temperatures get so low in the mountains, there isn't really any mosquitoes in there either. I might have seen one mosquito my entire time while here in Colorado. And what's even better, because there's really no bugs, your car doesn't get splattered on the front with bug guts and juice. <laughs> Now that was one thing coming from the Midwest it was really bad, especially at nighttime. Like the bugs like swarm your vehicle at nighttime and they'd be splattered all over your vehicle. Yeah, that doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen at all. So that is awesome. Next is things to do. Um, well, if you follow me here on YouTube, there are so many things to do. And that's what I do on my channel is I create a lot of content specifically to Colorado. I have like day trip ideas, city guides, uh, hiking, kind of all the things. So if you're looking to move to Colorado or if you're visiting Colorado, uh, definitely check out more on my channel. But basically there is uh, no shortage of things to do here in Colorado. So if you are an outdoor lover like we are, Colorado is perfect. You have so many things right in your backyard and right at your fingertips that if you get bored here, well, that's your own problem. <laughs> we have a four national parks. So we have dedicated forest lands that are public. We have dedicated wilderness areas. We have wildlife refuges. We have BLM land. We have grasslands. We have desert. We have some of the most beautiful mountain towns in the entire USA here in Colorado. And we have the largest mountain range that runs through our state, the Rocky Mountains. The hiking, the camping, the sightseeing, the skiing, winter activities. There is, there's endless adventure out here. And the nice thing is you can do all these things year round. Well, you can't really ski year round, but you can go hiking year round. You can go camping year round. If if you really want to there you can do that out here because there's tons of camping options here in winter in Colorado we are only a six hour drive from Utah which don't get me started on Utah that's another very diverse beautiful state we are an hour from Wyoming we're four hours from New Mexico and then you got Nebraska and Kansas next door too Colorado is the beginning of the West and it is a perfect area for an offshoot for a good road trip And last but not least, let's talk about housing. Now, we moved and purchased our house right in the middle of the pandemic, 2021. And we all know what the housing market has been like during this pandemic, and it has been insane. And in Colorado, I've learned you are definitely paying for location. The closer you are to the mountains, normally the higher the price is, depending on the area you are in. We literally have the Rocky Mountains right outside our window. We can see mountain peaks from Rocky Mountain National Park from our house. So yeah you pay for that in colorado and we moved from the midwest so prices in the midwest are probably going to be quite a bit lower than they are here in colorado so you really don't get as much for your money here in colorado as you would in a town in the midwest however we live in colorado now and it provides us with all the things we love to do and that's one thing we wanted to be able to live in a place where we can go do all the hiking and sightseeing and camping and all the things that we love and not be limited. We wanna be able to just pack up our Jeep and go to the mountains for the weekend. So to us, 
the trade-offs of housing out here being higher than the Midwest are so worth it. So the average median house price out here in Colorado is $535,000. That is your mid-peer priced houses in the entire state. Now half a million dollars might seem like a lot of money as a median house price, but there are areas that aren't gonna cost you that much. If you have a good realtor, they can point you in the direction if you're looking for something at a lower price point. But I do know the prices do keep going up out here in Colorado. Um, that was a report from 2021. Our realtor actually just sent us a market report on our house and she's guesstimating that our house has already risen $100,000 from when we bought it a year ago. That's kind of mind blowing to me. I don't know how to think about that because that's really crazy. So just a heads up, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with the housing market. Prices may drop. Um, they might keep going up. I have no idea. Now, all our utilities here in Colorado are actually less than Minnesota. Our gas, our electricity, our internet, like all utilities, everything is lower. We pay way less here in Colorado for all our utilities than we did in Minnesota. Our property taxes were about the same. Like there's really no price difference in our property taxes. However, we have less acreage here, paying the same amount for less acreage here in Colorado than we did in Minnesota. So technically they would be considered higher taxes. However, um, there's really no price difference from what we came from to here. Um, and same with house insurance, not really a huge price difference in house insurance, but we are living in a house that's more expensive than our Minnesota house. So that's kind of interesting. So technically house insurance would be less out here since our house value is higher. So um, those were kind of washes. Now I can't really comment on rent prices. We have never rented apartments or anything in Minnesota um, and here. So I can't give you any type of comparison as to what's going on with that. Um, I, just from things I, I've read, uh, people say, you know, rent is pretty high out here. So that is our perception of living in Colorado now for one full year. We couldn't be happier. Our quality of life out here has exploded. We are just so happy having so many things in our backyard basically and at our fingertips. We are people who love the outdoors and love to get out, sightsee, explore, hike, do all those things. And that's what Colorado is. If none of that stuff interests you, I guess, I don't know if there's really a purpose of you moving here then. You only have one life and we felt like this was the time of our life to finally make the jump. There's never gonna be a perfect time to make the move. I know a lot of people like, oh, I'm gonna wait till I'm retired or I'm gonna wait till the kids are out of the house or whatever it is. There's never gonna be a perfect time. There will always be another excuse. So we finally pulled that trigger and honest to goodness, it is one of the best decisions of our lives. So no matter where you're looking to move to, if you're just watching my video, just to kind of get a little perspective of Colorado, maybe you're comparing a few different states, just make sure wherever you're deciding to move is a destination that will allow you to thrive and flourish because that is what Colorado is to us. It has been life-changing. And if you wanna learn more about moving to Colorado, I did create some vlogs on our entire move out here with U-Haul, um, kind of our first week living in Colorado. We've done a lot of remodels and projects, so we have a lot of that going on. Um, so definitely go check out those vlogs if you're interested. I'll leave all the links to those videos down below. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I will give you my honest answer. This is what this vlog was, our honest feedback about everything. So if there's anything else you have questions about, don't hesitate in reaching out. So thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye, guys.